Today we have Jeff Andre with us, and uh, our goal is to provide um, some insights on barriers to entry, personal barriers to entry on fears and insecurities and mindset. And the reason why I brought Jeff in today is because he's actually a very good friend of mine that I've known pretty much forever. It's been about 35 plus years or 30, yeah, 35 Long plus time. years. Yeah. And, and Jeff is starting or, or working on his new endeavor, which is not released yet, but it's an application for, you know, building better habits and trying to conquer fears or at least understand your fears mm -hmm. and move forward and, and setting your mindset to, to positive, to move forward, to accomplish, visualize things and accomplish your goals. So Jeff, why don't you tell us, I know you, you own a business in St. Kitts, okay? Yeah. And you've, you've been gone for many years now. 15. 15 years, yeah. yeah. Just in St. Kitts? Just in St. Kitts. Just in St. Kitts. So uh, water sports business. Why don't you tell us about that? How did you get there? Yeah, so as you know, we grew up uh, doing all extreme sports, yeah. skateboarding, snowboarding, motocross, all that fun stuff. And then uh, I went to visit a friend in, in Florida who just got into kiteboarding. And I saw this sport and I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. And then sure enough, we went to party in South Beach for the weekend. And I'm like, oh my God, I love South Beach. I got to live here. And, and then I basically quit my job and drove to South Beach and became a kiteboarding instructor, which then ended up leaving, or leading to moving down to St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean to start my own kiteboarding school. And I did this in 2009 where... Most people didn't even know what kiteboarding yeah. was. The economy wasn't doing very well. And went out there and just started teaching lessons on the beach and kept saving more money and growing the business into the number one water sports center in the Caribbean. So And, and, and this whole time, too, taking into, taking into account that you had all your friends here, all your family here. Yeah. Everybody you pretty much knew on a, you know, was here. Yeah. In, in Canada. So right. you had to, you know, okay, you went to, to Florida to learn how to kite surf and to party in South Beach. Okay? That was, those were <laughs> that youth. Was life, those, that was the plan. Those, those weren't really ambitious that, dreams. They were, they, were, they were more youthful endeavors, right? Yeah. But then somewhere along the line, you said, hey, you know what? I'm going to make a business out of this. I, wanna, I want my lifestyle to be this way right, or something right. like that, right? Yeah. Well, and you saw it somehow. You saw your lifestyle one way and you said, hey, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. Yeah, so I, I mean, I got into the kiteboarding. I, I, I really fell in love with the sport. And the reason I became a kiteboarding instructor is because I knew that you can pretty much travel and work anywhere in the world and get a job teaching kiteboarding and, and traveling. And, you know, the beach life was important to me. I really enjoyed that when I experienced that in Florida. So once I, I did have that experience, I'm like, okay, this is what my, I wanted my life to be. And being a very competitive person, I. I got into kiteboarding and that's all I wanted to do, you know, like Hugh Hefner could have invited me to the Playboy Mansion if it was windy. I'm like, no, Hugh, I'm going <laughs> kiteboarding, you know, that's how, that's the type of passion yeah. and thing that I had for the sport. And I started training a lot and, and basically got to a professional level where I started competing yeah. and then I got injured. And when I went to, when I got injured, it was like, oh my God, I can't really kiteboard anymore. And I was kind of got started in the sport pretty late. And, you know, I'm competing against 16 to yeah. 20 year olds and I'm already 28 by the time I got to that level. And I started to focus more on the business side of it. And that's kind of what changed the mindset to be like, okay, like how can we grow the business and start making Why? Why more do you need money? a business? What did you want the business for? The, life, the, the lifestyle well, yeah, or to it, it was the just challenge like, or... Well, one, you know, having the, the financial stability is always good. Okay. But it was also just like, you know, people started coming out do lessons and then we get more phone calls and be like hey do you guys do surfing i'm like no all right so now i'm gonna save up buy some surfboards and then we did that and i hired a kiteboarding instructor that can also teach kiteboarding and surfing like myself and then the next thing was kayaks i saw in saint thomas i went to visit they had glass bottom kayaks so i'm like i saved up some money bought some glass bottom kayaks and started doing night kayaking tour and kayak tours and then the flyboard came out. I saw the flyboard on TV and I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing. And I was one of the first people to have that back in 2012 and saved up money, bought a jet yeah. ski, bought the flyboard. And then it just grew from there. When somebody said they wanted to do something, I'm like, well, why don't I offer that? You know, especially with a sport like kiteboarding is 
It's very wind, weather dependent. You right. need the wind. You need consistency in wind. Right. So St. Kitts is a great place for the wind, but you know sometimes we have customers and no wind, and then windy days and no customers. Yeah. And then this was a great way to offset that and and all uh, the gaps. And exactly. And then you know serve more people essentially, which you know. But you whatever. set your mind to living at the beach, to living to living somewhere with the sun, without the cold, and. Yeah. Um, Leaving, you know, maybe not leaving everybody behind, but just pursuing what you wanted to pursue. That's, and you did it. Yeah, that was very challenging. I uh, come from a great family and we're all very close. And we have, you know, as you know, a really core group of friends that uh, we're still all friends. Yeah, you know, 30 all know, plus years. Well, yeah. 30 plus years for all my friends. And, and oddly enough, this happens with many people is that one of the biggest challenges they have when they're trying to go this entrepreneurial path is a lot of people saying, no, you can't do that. It's not going to work out. And I remember having this conversation with you uh, in, in, in your garage. garage. Yeah. And we're, you're like, you know, how are you going to make any money out I there? I wasn't you talking sure? you out of it. It was, it was more so that I saw more potential for you here. I <laughs> right. saw like, you know, you could do anything you want here. Right. Right. And technically maybe there is more money potential here. In, in certain things, you know, True, in more but, things. But is money the thing that brings the happiness? I, I was kind of always at like, you know, when you when you think of a career or something you do, you're spending over 2,000 hours a year plus dedicating that much time. Now, I, I remember in, in, in high school, I took a co-op class. I wasn't very good in school, but I, we took a co-op class and they literally give you a book with all the different types of jobs, jobs and how much do. money you I did co-op. And everybody's like, oh, I, this a lawyer makes a lot of money, a doctor, an accountant. So let's say when you're that age, you think of $100,000 a year and you're like, oh my God, I want to make $100,000. And that sounds fantastic. But guess what happens? When you make $100,000 a year for five years, for 10 years, it's not that exciting anymore. No. And if yeah. you're doing that, and if you chose a career path for the money, but now $100,000 isn't exciting when you got to pay off your BMW and your house and all this stuff, but you're doing a job you don't like, that's not really a great path because the money, it's not that exciting anymore because you're used to earning that. And most people, whether they make 100, 200, 300, 30 more, there's, they live beyond their means. But a there's lot of also people. a lot of entrepreneurial stuff you can do in, in, in anywhere, in Canada, in the US, in North America. For Europe. sure. But I didn't have the passion right. for that. And right. that's what led me or to that. Or you found a passion that you wanted to pursue. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and this was, you know, I call it like a burning obsession, but I, I couldn't stop thinking of kiteboarding. I wanted yeah. to get out on the water and You'd I love to on windy people. Days I love to, to go. I love to be on the beach. It was the atmosphere. It was, you know, it's not a very stressful position. You know, there was other stresses for like, how am I going to pay my rent this, yeah. this month because I wasn't making enough money. But Overall, the, the lifestyle is something that I chose, and then I fixed the, the money part of it where, right. you know, and... I, and, and that's I, a great segue I really to... encourage, you know, to, to follow your passion and do something you love. You know, mo every, everybody says that and, and something But at to least do. If, you, if you follow the challenge, the, the passion, you know, even failures still feel like some type of triumph, so some type of success because you're doing what you... Tr you're trying to get somewhere that, that you've decided to take this path to get to right right so it's on you but you know it's stressful but it's also you're proud hey you made a mistake you know you're making all kinds of mistakes but you're doing it for yourself a lot of mistakes and <laughs> you know this is a great segue into your application that you're creating this yeah. whole mindset thing and the reason why i brought you on today was because i wanted to you know i want to stick to real estate topics okay mm -hmm. that was the whole point is to to give the benefit and the value to the viewers yeah you know not to real estate society but mostly to real estate consumers now this application you're creating, which is awesome, I went to go, you know, look at it and tinker with it a little bit, but it's yeah. it's to improve mindset. It's to set better habits. And mm -hmm. and by the way, you're you know you're right. Being here, going through these, you know, when I said to you about making money when we were in that garage, it, the money wasn't the goal in order to spend it. The money was the goal for the measure of success. Right. So it was it was okay. You know, we were young. We wanted maybe some material things. Yes, we right. understand, but. You know, as an entrepreneur here in North America, if you're really working, you don't have time for boats. Right. You know, you don't have time to drive your luxury cars because you're working 15 hours a day, sometimes 17, sometimes, you know, maybe you get a 10-hour day and that's a that's a slow day. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. right? <laughs> but, you know, along the, like you said, though, when you have a passion, it's not work. It's not work. So right. when I wake up at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning to, you know, do a quick run so I can get to work early, yeah. it's not because I have to. No. 
it's because you know I want to pursue and you know I wish I had an extra hour right to, to do it more time more time day. you know exactly. and, and you know I've, you've been noticing this lately since you've been in town because you're only in town for a limited time but you know yeah. people ask me to go golfing and I got annoyed yeah. it's like don't call me anymore you know only call me one day a week because I'd rather work and it's not work it's you know pursuing pursuing what makes you happy right actually. but there's been a lot of times where mindset and fear and feelings and, and failure and people talking in my ear have influenced me or put me in a different direction or tried to put me in a different direction. Right. So how does this application work to help, by the way, the, the, the habits, you know, habits, yeah. everybody can improve something. Yeah. Every, there's something everybody can improve on. So, so you know, the, the starting block of achievement is basically first understanding exactly what it is that you want without having that, that, that guide, that roadmap. And, you know, for me was, I didn't realize at the time that I wanted this huge water sports center, but I knew that I wanted to be a kiteboarding instructor and, and have that lifestyle, which right, grew what, what is that. the lifestyle? Being right. on the beach? So being on the beach, being in a friendly environment, teaching people who are on vacation or people, you know, training people a new skill, which is, it's very fulfilling, you know. Yeah, of course. We yeah. have thousands of reviews on TripAdvisor and all these things about what an amazing experience they had with us and to provide people with that. And I've had people fly from all over the world. I've been invited on yeah. mega yachts and, you know, some of these stories and meeting all these people. And that was the experiences that I wanted and, and to have that. And you get that when you're, when you're doing that. But the mindset is, again, you know, first knowing what it is that you want, at least okay. to some degree. Uh, without that, it's, this, it's like imagine driving from here to California without, without a, a road map. Yeah, or there, without Google Maps. Yeah. Now people don't Now it's maps, super easy. Put in your map, yeah. you go there, you can even, oh, there's direction a delay. Direction by direction, you just get an, traffic, yeah. cops, you know. Exactly, and it's all there, and it's very easy to get there. But imagine not having that. You'd never find California. It would take you forever. You know, when I started my, my first business, it was, it was delivery service. And That's right. You get to use a Perleys. Yeah. Like you get to use a MacBook. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you have to go through MacBook. a MacBook because, yeah. you know, I remember when we were kids and we wanted to find, you know, my mom wanted to take us somewhere. It was like, excuse me, do you know how to get <laughs> to, you know, yeah, just go up the street, make a left, and you have to make yeah. a left and then stop somewhere else. And, and then, then you uh, have no idea. And you have yeah. no idea. We're lost, you know, yeah. and it takes a half an hour to get to the waterfall or, or to Wild Water Kingdom, it was back right. then. So that's the second thing, right? First is knowing where you want to go, in this case, yeah. let's say California, and then the the roadmap that you use which is now maps or whatever yeah that's having the plan you yeah. need to have a plan of how you're going to get there but even actually sir i should say before the plan is you need to have the burning desire Design. for what it is that you want and and it can't just be oh i want to do this one day and i want to do but that what if you have day. the burning desire and the fear right like you have the desire right but the fear can tug on you more uh-huh your insecurity can tug on you more and maybe not even just fear but what about you know, being missing people, missing the family, being alone. Yeah, you certainly. You know, there's also through, all kinds of challenges going absolutely. through that. Absolutely, and again, you know, it's very difficult being away from your family and friends and in a new environment. But it all really depends on the attitude you have and how you look at the situation. Okay. And this is this is critical. It's never, you know, people always blame the circumstance, but it's sure. not the circumstance. Yeah. It's how you view the circumstance, Correct. which is... Uh, or how you react to the circumstance. Right. Or, and I'll give you a perfect example. We do jet ski snorkel tours, yep. and we took a big group one day. It was like eight people, and um, they all went through the exact same experience, and six of them thought it was the... And it was a little wavy because it was windy, and six of the, the eight thought it was the best experience of their life. They thought it was great. And the other two on the same experience thought it was terrible. They got water in their face. They, and this, they didn't enjoy it. And it's that's just, just the exact, they did the exact same thing. And it's the attitude that you have and the perspective that you take, which shapes the way you view life. And or how you feel about your experience. Yeah. Right. That's a good point. And, and that's a very important thing is that, you know, part of the things that you have to, that we teach and you have to gain the awareness and, and, and cancel out those negative thoughts and those fears. Literally, what I do is just, if, if something comes into my head and it's like not in, a, in line with my vision, it's like cancel, 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 how can, and then restate it in my, no, I can do this, I am gonna do yeah. this. I'll give you a perfect example. We teach kids how to swim in St. Kitts. Oddly enough, most people don't know how to swim. So hold on a second, on an island, 
<laughs> in yeah. St. Kitts, yeah. you teach the kids there. We do a free swim class uh, every week. For to, kids? Yeah. What age groups? We basically start them as young as five or six up to like 16. Up to 16. Yeah. And they don't know how to swim. I would say like 75, 80% of the people don't know how to swim. And, wow. And that, just like you have that reaction, is crazy because you can live in a landlocked Canada and everyone yeah. knows how to swim. Yeah. But the reason they have that is because their belief. And that belief comes from, and I see it all the that time. fear? The fear, and this is how it comes. You know, we're on the beach and it's a holiday, so there's a lot of locals on the beach. And the little child's by the water and they're about to go in because they're curious. There's no fear there. They're curious about the water, and the mother who doesn't know how to swim grabs the kid like this and picks him away. No, no danger, because she's scared because if her kid goes in the water she any deeper, she can't her. protect it, which now that child is always scared of the water because of that traumatic experience that the child experienced huh. because their mother grabbed them away. But here, when we're taught that, oh, it's the water, you know. In well, fact, if, if I swim, I'm, I wouldn't be worried if my kid went for a swim because I'd be right there to... Go in and get them. Right. And I'll give you another example. Is I remember I was teaching, this was in actually in a pool this time, and there was a little girl, she was about five or six years old, and she, she didn't know how to swim yet. And I was just trying to get her to let go of the ledge and just swim across, which was a very short distance. And she would let go and, and then go right back. And she had this fear that she couldn't do it. So, you know, I'm like, it's okay, you'll be okay. I'm right here if you need me, just try you know she'd let go again and come right back finally in like five minutes or so she finally lets go and she starts swimming and she makes it across she's super happy but what changed did she get any extra additional swimming instruction no nothing at all the only thing that changed was the belief that she can do it yeah and that's what you have to have you have to have that belief in yourself and the way to create that is by Again, canceling out those negative thoughts and constantly telling yourself you can do it. And you know, pursuing a path to do it. And pursuing a, Educating something. Educating along the way. Right. Learning. Getting the knowledge. Yeah. Growing as a person. You, if you're always looking at, well, oh, I'm not... she didn't learn anything new by reading a book because she's young, but she had right. you to teach her how to think exactly. new. Exactly. How, to, that how she, to view new. That I believed in her, which Correct. gave her the belief to do it. You know, and that's very important is that... You have, to, you have to believe in yourself. You have to do that. And, and the way to do that when you have these fears is you just cancel them out. Cancel, 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 and replace the thought with something that tells you you can do it. And that will allow you to get over these hurdles and conquer some of these fears. And, you know, some of it takes a little bit more inner work, and you've got to do some meditating. And, and this application that you're creating does all of this. It incorporates all these. It What's it called, by the way? Ultimate mind training. Ultimate mind training. Yeah. Okay. Coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. Yes. Beta testing. So we, uh, soon. we're already in beta testing and, and essentially what it is, is a bunch of tools for your mind that can help you stay on track onto your vision with the things that you want, track your time, help stay you build focused, habits. Stay focused, clear minded. Right. And, and get to your goals. Yeah. Essentially when you think about it, what you really have in life is all you have is time and your attention. Yeah. And that's... That's all it is. That's what, and your thoughts, you know? So if you focus your thoughts and attention on what it is that you want and you keep progressing yeah. and moving confidently I believe in, that, yeah. in that direction, then you will get there eventually. Some, yeah. you know, if it's a, you know, a thousand miles starts with a first step. Yeah. You just have to, you, you know, all you, you got to focus on is that one step forward. Exactly. And you know? that's very important as well. You know, one of the other things about doing things that you don't want to do. Everyone has things they don't want to do. Of course. Yeah. So for example, I don't like washing I don't, dishes. Yeah. Or something I don't really like is having to do taxes or whatever and go through all <laughs> yeah. this stuff and sit there and you think of these things. But what you, the way I do, or even let's say you, you know, you don't want to go for a run in that morning or do that yeah. exercise. Instead of thinking, oh, I don't want to run five kilometers today, or I don't want to spend two days on the computer going through all the invoices. You've got to put it in like such a simple step that it's impossible to say no. All I got to do is put on my shoes and tie my shoes and walk outside. That's it. Yeah. And that's it. And you walk outside and you start walking for a bit, maybe because you don't feel like running. Almost 99% of the time, I end up just getting into the jog anyways and end up doing the same 5K that I yeah. didn't really want to do. And after I feel great about it because I got over that 
I wouldn't say fear, but that procrastination well, we don't, of wanting to do it. We technically don't have to talk ourselves into doing it. We just have to stop talking ourselves out, out of doing, doing it. it. Yeah, exactly. So or, or thinking you know, just too much. Kind of put that into a small step to get started and just get started. That's the biggest thing. Just get started. And the hardest challenge yeah. is to just get started.